Welcome back to Let's Play DDO Permadef. Alright, so I've just been quickly working out what quests... what quests I'm actually trying to do here. And it's looking tricky, so... there's not a lot of stuff that I actually feel comfortable doing on this guy as Elite at level 2. And they did some of the level 1s, I'm not really comfortable doing Elite. So I've basically been working out what ones I want to do Elite now, and what ones I want to delay until I uh, am ready to do Miseries. I forgot to... Uh, Memorize Master's Touch again. Whoops. So the, uh, the central problem here is that I can't do, um, what's it called, the one up there, the, uh, the manufactory. I can't do redemption on Elite without any, so, without any healing. Or at least for sure I'm not doing it at level without any healing. Um, even with, um, the summons, I don't think I'd be able to keep enough aggro away from Hayton that I wouldn't, uh, find I needed to heal him. These rats are moving slowly today. So I have to do that one on hard, which breaks my elite streak. But I would like to do miseries and as much as I can before it's on elite. Miseries on an elite streak is a lot of XP. So I was figuring out, uh... A mangled sewer grate leads to an old abandoned Kenneth manufactory. I was figuring out which of the level 2 quests I thought I could do on Elite in order to rebuild an Elite streak before Miseries. But there's actually not that many that, uh, at level 2 that I want to do Elite either, so, um, it's a bit of a... a sparse choice, really. So my plan is to do the level 1s at Elite that I can do at Elite, and then drop down and do a hard streak for a while. And leave everything that I can do Elite until after Redemption. In the meantime, I'm trying to get to level 3 as fast as I can. <laughs> Yeah, my head really sucks. The decrepit catacombs are slightly obscured by the falling water. Okay, that should be a bit better. I took the uh, Mullins Great Axe as the reward from uh, Collaborator. So I have a good Soargan bashing Great Axe now. Rumbling falls converge into a small body of water. I also done what I forgot to do at um, after liking after taking level two, which is hot bar trip now. Very useful when you're um, fighting up close as this guy is doing.
Contrary to appearances, I'm heading for sacrifices here. I'm just sweeping up all of the explorers en route. Devour occultists, keep a watchful eye over the seas from this strategic lookout. I guess I should check the uh, rare over to the um, north as well. Yep, let's go do that. So when I put this guy together, I was also thinking for a little bit about the um, the rarest here. I was thinking about doing a uh, rogue splashed wizard as well. I thought that might be quite an interesting one to solo because you get better UMD and um, evasion improves your survivability a lot. The Sawagin keep close tabs on the comings and goings of the Cortex village citizens from this over. But I have tried the uh, Wizard with Rogue Splash before, and it's a pretty horrible build to play at low levels. In fact, there's no qualification required, it is just a horrible build to play. It's not even the uh, I mean, one level less of um, Spellcaster level hurts your damage a bit, but you also lose the Ar Arcane Augmentation Cloak, which is uh, a really serious loss. That's a big chunk of your damage gone. The uh, the arcane augmentation cloak that you get as a uh, wizard or sorcerer is a really powerful item uh, at low levels. Plus one caster level via level one spells. So at level two, that's a 50% increase to my Nyx damage. And of course, partly that just reflects how steep the power curve is for wizards, that at level 1, level 2, your spell damage is, is really negligible compared to what it gets to be later. But even so, at, uh, at low levels, the, the item is hugely valuable. At level 3, for example, a fighter is getting like plus 4 damage from power attack. Which is useful for sure, but a wizard is getting plus 30% damage um, from the arcane augmentation cloak, which is you know, pretty much as powerful as power attack. So something that is as valuable as uh, as an important uh, fighter feat, which you just get as a free item, is uh, really nice. It's useless once you get to level 5, of course, and uh, stops being really useful when you get to 4. But at the really low levels, it's um, absolutely essential. Followers of the Devourer make sacrifices to their evil god at this spell shrine. So if you take the Rogue Splash and take rogue is your first level, you're losing one caster level to the rogue level and then another caster level for not having the arcane augmentation cloak. Uh, so that's a huge hit to your spell damage. Now admittedly I'm not using a lot of spell damage yet on this guy. So you could possibly play a melee oriented uh, with rogue, maybe that works.
But of course on a whiz rogue you wouldn't build the character anything like this, you would uh, have a lot more points in dexterity and nothing in strength. So uh, the melee approach wouldn't work so well. Right, time for sacrifices. This entrance leads down into an ancient Kenneth aqueduct. This is the easiest quest on the island by a long way. In fact, it's pretty much easier than um, everything except the storehouse, I would say. Provided you stay away from the skeletal mage. Summons is doing some nice damage there. Resilient spider webs block your path. They don't look capable of withstanding blows from your weapon, though. Well, I suppose he's doing good damage, but his attack speed is pretty slow. The cells in this room hold a number of desperate Korthos villagers. guy does not show up very often. The uh, Skeletal Knight is uh, totally outclassing the uh, enemies in here for now. Which is pretty much what I thought, which is why I uh, made the effort to get the action points to get uh, access to it as early as I could. Of course I took Augment Summoning as my uh, level 1 feat as well, so I wanted to get access to the benefits of it as soon as I could.
Now, can I manage to get my skeleton past the trap up here? He's not teleporting to me quite yet. Interesting. So the uh, summon seems to teleport after. Is he teleporting every twenty or thirty seconds? Maybe. That's that's not too bad. Not as good as actually having control. Well, I suppose I do have control over it. I wasn't really paying attention to the uh, hireling bar. Though. have breached the Devourer's Sanctum. From ahead you hear a woman's plaintive cry for help. trip is not too hot on this guy. But it works sometimes and so it's always worth trying. It's a good job that I uh, never have to rescue the same villager more than once. They uh, might seem... The last imprisoned villager grasps your outstretched hand, rising and running for freedom. They might figure out that I... Vaura will not feast on the innocent tonight. Not on your watch. They might figure out that I care more about breaking the barrels than I do about rescuing them. Okay, this guy's a little tougher, that should be no problem. The evil cult leader will spill innocent blood no more. Trading necromantic spells with him there. Hmm, interesting. But I think I will stick with uh, two-handed. I need a good um, flaming great axe, really. This entrance leads down into an ancient Kenneth aqueduct. So I think um, having the hot buff the summons is new since I last played a Pal Master. Is that an update 19 thing? That's pretty neat. If um, if the skeleton summons is uh, is as good as the artificer pet is at uh, being able to be directed around, that'll be very handy. Still no rare. Or 
right, so I will grab the rest of the explorers. Come across a makeshift camp. A scraggly dwarf sits on a log, trying in vain to keep warm. The uh, Kulfas and Cerulean Hills explorers are very useful for uh, getting some quick XP to try and get to level 3 as fast as possible. I might even do Cerulean Hills explorers next. A bone-chilling breeze emanates from the mouth of Misery's Peak. Level 3 is obviously a huge power upgrade again, and that will open up a lot of the stuff I intend to do hard and elite in the harbour. There's plenty of stuff that I will be happy doing elite once I have web, but would be a little scared of right now. Also the spell damage is becoming significant by level 3. This broken structure once formed an elaborate aqueduct that channeled water across the island. Okay, I think the two that I'm missing will be the two down by stopping the Sawagan. I was able to spot the uh, other ice methods, but not uh, Zia. That was what was confusing me for a minute there. The rumbling falls converge into a small body of water. That, uh, that chill touch seems like an unpleasant way to die. Doesn't beat a uh, great axe though. Yet. Looks like with a decent number of action points spent in the necro tree, plus taking a few more levels, it's going to be a bit brutal.
I'm tempted to uh, quickly rack up my 100 kills. I'm pretty close. Alright, nice. I think I've got two more action points there, and um, more than halfway to level three. See you in the next video.